Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 178 or 9, or could be completely wrong, of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, man, I've been, uh, I've been on, a, on a fucking healthy kick, bro. I've been going to gym every day this week. Uh, it's a Wednesday, three days in a week. I've been smashing it, trying to, trying to finally put on some weight, and uh, it's working, man, as it always does. Who would have thought that doing shit consistently pays off? I swear, man, that that happens with like fucking everything. But you know how you're you're always surprised. Like, why are we always surprised? We go, oh fuck! All I had to do was not stop. That's the only thing. It's like, oh, don't stop. Oh, fuck. How have I not learned this yet? I'm 25 and I keep stopping. I'm like, oh, cool. I've, I, can, I can live three kilos more than when I started. Time for a holiday. Six months go by. Oh, why don't I look good yet? Because I stopped, cunt. So that's my thing now. It's never stop speared, son. Spe- never stop spears. That's me. <laughs> and I will never stop unless... It's a sexual encounter. Uh, then, uh, then probably a great idea uh, to stop if requested, um, because otherwise you would be uh, never free, Spears, or whatever your last name is, never free, Fred, because you've been jailed for rape. And uh, that's how I would like to start this um, episode with a bit of fitness advice and sexual education for all all of you skinny virgins out there. Um. Thanks to everyone who came up to the first Melbourne show. I had a really, really great time. Um, I'm recording this before the second one, so I assume the second one was also amazing. Thank you so much to everyone who came to the second one. Um, two sold out shows, man. That's that's nuts. That's like uh, 900 people in my hometown. I uh, that's a that's a big number, bro. It feels big now. It's um, it's really, really cool. And and Melbourne's funny because I Melbourne's where like obviously I started, and I've got all like the crazy OG fans. Um, that and Brisbane still have people coming back from like l- actually four or five years ago. And it's cool, um, you know, going from a place where I literally touched the roof with my head uh, in a shithouse uh, conference room that was converted to a stage for two hours a night into, you know, the best one of the best comedy clubs in the world. 450 seats, twice in a row sold out. So it means a lot. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, if you want to come see me live, make sure you jump on lewespears.com slash gigs. Tickets are going nuts now, uh, cause we're halfway through as they always do. Cause people miss it and they go, oh, fuck, I should have gone. And then everyone else gets tickets. I swear to God, the biggest selling factor is cunts missing the show. Like you go there, you go to one regional town once and then, um, no one comes. And then, and then fucking a month after you go, everyone goes, oh man, I should have gone. Year two, you actually sell tickets. I don't think I've ever sold well the first time I've gone to any place. Um, it's always the second time you go nuts. So, uh, I don't know. I'm rambly. Um, I had a pretty good week. We're back on, we're back on radio for this month, um, uh, which is, which is fun. They want us to come back for a month cause they needed us. They needed somebody to fill the Sundays for, I think they, they do some weird rotating show uh where they have like different duos and talent do like a month and then every now and then they run out of people to trial so they just hit us up so we were like yeah whatever as long as we can keep doing luke and lewis as a podcast that's no worries doesn't get in our way we've got to pay for keelan somehow um so that's worked out well um and uh yeah dude i've just been uh just been hustling i'm uh i'm kind of excited to that that everything's like working well like this year with the tour and videos and shit it's going well which is very different from normal normally like i'm i'll do well for the first four months of the year and then the 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 remaining eight months are just chaos of me trying to promote shows while also doing videos and then also getting on planes and my channel goes to shit so kind of the first year i've ever done youtube properly for the whole year um, now, I did want to talk about some stuff here. I don't know if you can tell that I'm rambling, but I did want to talk about some stuff. Uh, however, my phone's over there, and I've been thinking about going to get it to get the notes that I had for the podcast, but it is all the way over there. All right, I'll get it. One second. Oh. Okay. And we're back on. Uh, where are we? Um... Dude, oh man, that's that thing I wanted to talk about. The fucking um, I saw this this product. Well, I suppose it's not a product. This new innovation for the workplace, right? This is some shit. Uh, this is like the end. This is the end of all life as we know it, right? They've invented a uh, like a badge, right? 
that you wear around your neck. So like a lanyard and then it has like a square base thing. I watched this video all about it, about the people who invented it, right? Uh, and the people who invented it should be locked away. Uh, if you were asked to invent this, you as a responsible human being for should go, oh, actually, that'll make the world worse, so I'm not going to invent it. It's like, the, it's like I can only hope that they invented it like how they made the nuclear bomb where they just told different scientists to make different parts and only like one evil guy knew what they were making and all the other scientists thought they were just making an intricate part that would end up in a watch, but it, but in reality it would just nuke Japan twice, you know? They were creating the time ticker bomb thing, right? It's this thing that for big, for big uh, uh, office companies, right, where it's a lot of office work, and it's like a lanyard, and it's a security pass. But not only is it a security pass, it's also a monitor, and it monitors your posture, it monitors where you are in the building, it monitors your heart rate, it monitors your bathroom breaks, it monitors how much you speak, what you speak about, and essentially just tracks exactly every single movement, sound, breath, and fart you take and make in the office building so that they can monitor 100% of what your body does so they can discipline you for acting like a normal human when they want you to be a robot. That's some shit. That's like the KPIs I had to deal with back in the call center. Where they're going, oh, you get a, you get a uh, seven-minute bathroom break and you get 15-minute break twice a day, and then you get half an hour for lunch, which is just enough time, right, to hit the lunch button on the computer system, pick up your wallet and your phone, tuck your shirt in because there's a dress code, go out the door, go down the stairs, jump in the elevator, walk to the nearest food place, order your food, wait for your food to cook, get your food, and then wait for it to cool down, and then throw it in the bin because your half hour is over and you can't eat it, right? They don't treat like a human, they want you to be a fucking robot. So this thing, it monitors everything you do. I should get it for Keelan. <laughs> Attach it to him every time he slacks off and an alarm goes off. Get back to work. That shit's evil though, man. And they're, they're talking about like, oh, how good is this technology? How amazing is it? No, it's not. That's some dystopia shit. Because you know who's going to get that? China. They're going to get that and they're going to attach it to all of their nine-year-olds making shoes. And what it what the device will do is it'll it'll start it'll get so good that it'll it'll start alerting employers with bats whenever an employee thinks about slacking off. It'll just send a thinking about slacking off alert. You go, Oi, you thought about slacking off. He's like, Yeah, but I didn't actually do it. No worries, you know the punishment. You get one stroke instead of two. Warning. Nine-year-old shoemaker thinking about jumping out the building, deploying suicide nets. Apple will need that one. I don't know. I feel like it's. I feel like anything that they can't automate, they're trying to turn humans into automations. Do you know what I mean? Like they're trying to turn a human into a robot. If they can't replace a human with a robot, they're trying to game and track and turn everything into percentages and fucking figures and this and that and key performance indicators so that un until you get to the point where if a human is not perfect, they lose their job. World's fucked, man. It's all, for, it's all for money. That's that shit. It's all America's fault, I reckon. I feel like Australia has a good balance. But maybe we only have that balance because we have such a small population. Maybe it's not possible in a place that has 500 million fucking people. But I feel like Australia has a good balance of, you can make as much money as you want, uh, but you also have to help out because we need roads, right? Whereas America's like, you can ha you can make as much money as you want. And he's like, oh, can I also step on the necks of the homeless? You go, yeah, absolutely. We're all for that. Let's go. Jump in the truck. We'll get six. I think that um, America's biggest problem isn't actually People think, oh, look, Amazon doesn't pay taxes. Apple doesn't pay taxes. It's like, that's so not America's problem. The problem is, where are the taxes going when people do pay them? You know, like I went to New York. The roads are fucked. 
Nothing's fixed. Homeless people are everywhere. Everything's dirty as hell. I didn't see a single person cleaning anything. There's literally just trash bags on the street. And it's like all of the tax money that does get collected, which you know is fucking heaps. Where is it going? That's their biggest issue. It's not, oh, not enough people are paying taxes. It's where the fuck is it going? I'll tell you where it's going. It's going into... um. Everyone in Iraq and Iran via bullets. That's where it's all going. It's all going into the fucking military. They spend in what? What's their military budget? I swear, bro. Every single problem in America could be solved by them stopping spending on their military. But then they'll just get invaded and become China, right? Is that the is that the fear? I'm gonna solve I'm gonna solve everyone's problem on the Speared Sunnies podcast by rambling with zero research about what America's biggest problem is. America military spending. Let's have a look. What do they spend? That number's so big, I don't even know how to say it. How many zeros is that? It's 693-000-000-000. That is nine zeros. Is that 600 trillion or is that six trillion almost seven (laughs) what's what number is that is that eight trillion what's nine zeros eight is a seven figures is a million so eight figures is a billion so then nine figures is a trillion can I, I'll just search the number in words. Eight billion. Oh. Oh, well, I thought they spent like a fucking trillion. Oh, no, wait. Maybe I Googled the wrong number. I think I Googled the wrong number. Okay. I'll do the 600 number or the 693 number. All right. And then you do that in words. In words. Six hundred ninety-three billion fifty-eight million. Six hundred billion dollars a year. That's insane. Six hundred billion dollars. So it's like I saw some tweet going, "Oh, if Amazon paid tax, that would bring in five billion dollars." It's like, yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't pay tax, but I am saying that if they did pay tax, none of the problems that are going to be solved like people think it would. It's like, oh, we can't afford to save homeless people and fix healthcare because all these corporations don't pay tax. It's like, no, it's because the tax money they do get goes straight into the military. It's like, let's say Amazon does pay tax. Do you really think that money is going to go into making America a better place? Or is it going to go into a rocket aimed at a wedding in Iran? I think that's what's going to happen, bro. It's just going to end up blowing up a bunch of civilians. A $5 billion rocket straight into a church. And it'll have the Amazon logo on it. It'll be like an Amazon Prime delivery. Under 24 hours or your money back guarantee. (laughs) Ha ha. I don't know. I do I do feel um I've started using Amazon like to buy stuff and I feel so guilty using it because it's such a big global mega corporation that's not even Australian but also fuck it's good. It's the best service I've ever used in my life hands down. I got my free Prime membership. This sounds like an ad. It's not, right? I got my free Prime membership, bro. I got Amazon Prime, all their TV shows, and I got free shipping for fucking everything. And their shipping, even in Australia, it just comes the next day. And everything's cheaper. I feel like such a piece of shit supporting that global mega corporation. But also, it's convenient. So, fuck the planet. You know what I mean? That's, honestly, I complain about shit, and I say, oh, you know... We gotta fix stuff and this and that, but at the end of the day, I'm making it worse. So are you. You know? Support local business. Or 
get a tripod sent to you in a day. It's pretty good. I have made myself a rule though. I'm not going to buy comic books from that place. Oh, I'm not going to do it. I just have I have my fucking mic on. Okay, it is. Sorry. I thought I didn't have my mic on. That would have been a catastrophe. That would have made the, the next half hour of the podcast incredible. Um, but unfortunately, I've done my job probably I'm not, and I'm not angry. Um, I've made myself a rule. I'm not allowed to buy comic books on Amazon because I like supporting my local comic store because they need that. But I feel like shit like if I'm buying like... if I, I feel like if I'm buying shit from another global mega corporation like batteries, yeah... Or what did I buy recently? Uh, An SD card for my camera, right? If I'm buying from like fucking SanDisk or some place that just makes disposable spoons, I'm allowed to get that off Amazon because no one gets hurt. But if I just buy it, like if I if I walk past my local comic book store and it's it's the same price, right? Amazon's comics aren't any cheaper. If I walk past my comic book store and I see that guy trying to feed his kids, and then I go, "Hey, mate!" and then I just order that shit on Amazon, like a piece of shit, then I feel like that's no good. But man, it's the best shit ever. It's so fucking good. I bought I bought these jeans on Amazon. They actually have everything. Do you see my foot? You see how how my my black jeans people people always go, bro. How did you find jeans that are long enough for you? I didn't. I never have, and I never will. The secret, right, is black socks. I found these jeans from Levi's that are like just a little bit too short for me. They're worse because I'm sitting down and my knees are bent. But if I wear black socks, bro, you can't tell. The only reason you can tell is because my black socks. They also aren't like high enough for me. So you see that little, my leg midriff. I look like a 14 year old girl at the movies showing off her mid- midriff. Except um, she's Arabic and she's just hit puberty. So she's got belly hairs. That's all my leg hairs. <laughs> oh, people weren't happy about I Am Alex being on my channel, were they? Oh, they weren't happy. You got lots of lots of mean comments. I would say, man, it's actually fucking hilarious. I don't know whose fans treated the other person worse, right? Because I don't know if you guys remember, six months ago, I did a video on Alex's channel and oh, they hated me. <laughs> and now Alex does one on my videos and everyone hated him. So we're fucking even, all right? Oh man, everyone, when I did that video on Alex's channel, bro, you should see the comments. Go go on I'm Alex's channel and just watch it. I'm being my normal self. I'm saying cunt. I'm saying shit you shouldn't say. I'm definitely joking though, right? I'm clearly fucking joking. But I may have pushed it. Uh, I may have uh, corrupted Alex a little bit because I don't think he generally talks or swears like that in any of his other videos he just got roped up in my australian comedian energy and then they hated us that well they sorry i don't when i say us what i really mean is me his fans fucking hated me i i think the top comment the last time i checked it six months ago was alex never have this man on your channel ever again he is awful (laughs) And that just makes my soul smile, bro. Like a little 14-year-old girl saw me and went, Oh, that's a mean man. We should never support him ever. Cancel this rude, uncouth Australian. And that's really why I do this. I know that sometimes I say, Oh, I do it for the love and I'm passionate about stand-up comedy. I just want to make the world laugh. No, I want to make 14-year-old girls cry. That's my mission in life. I'm a 25-year-old man and that's my real passion in life. Not like, you know, Jeffrey Epstein cry. I'm just meaning like, you know, offended cry in a comment section. Um, But yeah, anyway, so then, you know, uh, I I put, I was sitting on this terrible TV with Alex for ages because I, I, not for any particular reason, just because I was just sitting on it for ages um, because uh, I knew that when my tour came up, I wanted to have videos in the bank. So I just sat on that. Um, because, and I've got a bunch of other terrible TVs and then I thought, oh, well, today's the, a good time to do it because we didn't have a video for Tuesday and, uh, uh, I think it's a good video. So I put it out and all of these comments calling Alex a snake and this and that and say, oh, how could you work with him because of this fucking 
YouTube drama that happened between him and Slazo, who, by the way, I've talked to and I'm cool with. I don't know him as well as I know Alex, but Slazo's cool, whatever, right? Oh, and, but all of these people going, how could you fucking work with Alex after he, you know, accused Slazo of doing this and doing that? And it's like, fuck, cunt. What am I supposed to do? It's ultimately, here's the reason. It's none of my business. I've known Alex for fucking years, okay? Him and Slazo had their fucking thing. I know Slazo. I never got involved in that shit when all that shit was going against Slazo. And you know what? I'm not getting involved in this shit with Alex either. Because you know where it all ends? In fucking tears. When the minute you fucking start involving yourself with all this YouTube drama and all this YouTube bullshit, you know where it ends you? It ends you with fucking comment sections full of snake emojis and clown faces. And I'm not partaking in that fucking shit, bro. I'm going to be nice to everyone unless they're a scummy, scammy cunt, which Alex is not, okay? At worst, dude made a mistake, yeah? I don't know why the... Like, it's so fucking ridiculous that the whole world loses their shit at Slazo for some stuff that ended up being false, right? So everyone's cancelling Slazo, and then uh, everyone pulls back on the cancellation because everyone fucking believed this person that came out, yeah? Everyone in the world pretty much believed it. I looked at it. I was like... Oh, okay, that looks pretty bad, but I'm going to reserve judgment till I hear from him. Heard from him. Turns out, a lot of those screenshots, a lot of stuff was omitted. Definitely wasn't 100% cool. There was some shady shit in there, but you can kind of bump it down to just awkward teenage relationship. Yeah? Like, awkward, bad relationship stuff. Which is not worth cancelling someone who's at the very start of their life. And also, the person who was the victim omitted and edited a lot of stuff. And it was clearly organized very well, right? To the point where everyone on Twitter and on YouTube believed this shit went against Slazo, right? Alex got roped up in that too. And to be honest, if, if someone that I knew personally came to me and said, Oh, this person has done this to me. Here's the evidence. I can see myself in the same situation. I feel like anyone could. A person you're friends with comes up with all these allegations that look real, obviously, because the whole world fucking fell for it. And they come to you, and you have a platform and a position of power, and you obviously obviously think these things are wrong, even though they turn out to be false, unbeknownst to you. Surely you'd say something. You kind of should. Maybe he didn't go about it the right way. End of the day, none of my fucking business. And then anyway, all this... Anyway, what happened has happened... And then I put a video out with a cunt, who I love, love Alex, I'm calling him a cunt because I'm Australian, <laughs> and then all these fucking comments come, going, oh, I can't believe you would work with him, this and that, and it's like, oh, okay, so how we're going to react to someone, so we're obviously angry about cancel culture, yeah? Slazo got cancelled, and that was a bad thing to do, that was incorrect. So how we're going to respond to that is by cancelling the other guy. It's like, I'm not partaking in this fucking cancel culture bullshit. Everybody makes mistakes. And I think that what happened is understandable. And also, why the fuck would I address this publicly when I know both of them? I don't know Slazo very well. I've talked to him a few times. He seems like a nice person. But I know Alex quite well for years, yeah? And it's like, what am I supposed... Like, what's the actual reasonable adult thing to do? Am I supposed to address this shit on YouTube for your entertainment? Or maybe I should just talk to him in real life like I did. Like a fucking human being, bro. So that's what I did. And, that, you know, I was there when it was all happening. And my advice was stay out of it and that's still my advice and that's the advice that I'm fucking following now is stay out of this fucking YouTube drama bullshit because at the end of the day all of these people leaving comments they're doing it for their entertainment because beef and drama and cancelling is entertaining as fuck 
but I'm not partaking in it because also I'm on tour, bro. What am I going to do? Sit down and fucking do research about a six months old thing that happened in on Twitter in a country that I've never been to from cunts that I don't know that well and this and that. No, I'm going to do what everybody should be doing and watch for this watch from the sidelines eating popcorn brain for blood <laughs> but yeah i got no i got no issue with alex i got no issue with slazo i think that they've had their thing and also alex fucking put out a thing about it and apologized and slazo said it's all cool and also slazo came out and said hey don't harass anyone that was involved in this shit I've been cancelled, and I know how horrible and toxic that shit is. So you know what I'm doing? Listening to him. Why aren't you? Huh? That's what I think about that. I think, yeah, I'm not going to fucking respond to a false cancellation by completely cancelling the other person. It's like, bro, if you never worked with a YouTuber that hasn't made it... that. If you'd never work with a YouTuber, wait, <laughs> what am I trying to say? If you only work with YouTubers who have never made mistakes, bro, you're not working with anyone ever. Like Alex is some fucking 20 something year old dude. He's got good, good intentions. Everybody makes mistakes. And to be honest, the co obviously the consequences were severe, but the mistake was a small one, which was just believing a person who clearly seemed like she had evidence. That's it. Um, so yeah, that's what I fucking think about that. Um, what else do we have to talk about here? I've written some shit down. Am I going to do that? Oh, man. This morning, I had like a beautiful moment in nature that turned out to be horrifying. I was walking down the street and um, there were like, we got magpies everywhere in Australia. It's like breeding season. I haven't been swooped at all. I think it's because my mum feeds them. So all of the mad magpies treat us as allies rather than enemies. I'm like linked up in the magpie world. So don't fuck with me or you'll, or you'll get swooped, cunt. All it takes is one piece of bread and you're done. Um, but I was walking down, walking down the street, right? And um, there was like six magpies on the ground, like flying around this one other magpie that was also on the ground. And they were all walking around and, and poking it and checking on it and cawing and shit like that. And I thought, oh no, one of them has died and, and their friends are trying to wake him up. And there was one in particular that kept like poking it, kept jumping on it. And I'm pretty far away, kept like flapping and, and making a lot of noise. I'm like, oh, that's so sad. But that's also so beautiful that, you know, life is life and nature is happening in front of me. And they were probably partners. Maybe they had chicks together or whatever. And they're trying to wake him up. And I thought, well, I'm just going to experience this moment and watch it uh, because I think that's, you know, it's, it's, it's life and death and emotion and this and that, and that's beautiful. And then I, I got a little bit closer, and uh, they were all just eating it. They <laughs> were just eating its eyeballs. It was just a fucking dead bird, and they were all just like, oh, food, great. They were eating it, sucking its brains out, eating its entrails, just fucking fighting to, fighting to the death to eat one of their mates. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess that wasn't the beautiful moment I thought it was in my head. Thanks, National Geographic, you fucking cunts. Where's my, where's my classical sad piano, huh? Where's that? tugging at my heartstrings, thinking that animals are anything other than instincts and feathers, you fucking dogs. That just made me think like, oh, that's what my cat's going to do if, you know, I die. If I fall over, its, if I trip over its tail and whack my head and die, it's not going to meow until, you know, the neighbors come and check. It's just going to start eating my eyes. I'm like, oh, a snack. Glad that cunt's fucking dead. Now I can just eat him instead of his shitty food. My cat's an asshole, huh? You know what, mate? I've, cats are so weird, dude. Every time we change its food, it turns into a different cat. 
Like cats are cats. You know what? I reckon cats will be great pets in like a hundred million years of evolution when they just work out how to live with us. You ever want to skip ahead of a couple hundred million view, views, a couple hundred million years and just see how evolution pans out? I reckon that is when cats will be good. Because we domesticated dogs way before cats, like fucking thousands of years. I don't know how long. Way, way, way before uh, cats, we had dogs as pets, right? So dogs know what they're doing. It took them like 600,000 million years or whatever to work it out, but they stopped being wolves. You know what I mean? Like cats haven't stopped being lions yet, even though they like we've got we've got the we've molded the cat's body to our preference, but they still got lion brain. They don't realize that they're just supposed to be cuddly cute things. And my cat doesn't get that. It's just I've just realized that my cat doesn't have per- a personality. It just has instincts, which is, "Oh, a thing is moving. I must eat it." And don't touch my belly. That pisses me off. My cat's such an independent asshole. I like it, kinda, but it is an asshole, right? And I feel like that's how she feels about me. Like she's like, oh, I like the long guy, but he's a bit of an asshole because he keeps trying to be nice to me, and I don't ever want to be touched. I'm st- I'm lying down on the couch reading, right? Having a lovely Sunday, just reading, sitting down, and I've, I'm 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 kind of lying sideways on the couch like this yeah so i've got my my knees tucked up and i've got a little i've got a little space where between my knees and my ass perfect for a nice warm space for a cat to lay down and relax and so the cat comes up after about 20 minutes lies down between my calf and my thigh and puts its head on my calf and i thought oh isn't that the cutest thing in the world she finally likes me so i sit there and i'm still reading and then i just reach over to give her a little scratch and then and then what she does is it's the cutest thing she gets all four of her paws and she wraps them around my arm and then she starts trying to chew my fucking fingers off gets all of her claws off and tries to open an artery. It's fucked. I hate the cat. She doesn't like me. She's like, oh, you touch me. Time to die. And I don't think she even knows what she's doing. She'll like in a split second go from purring to just trying to kill you because you just pressed one of its buttons wrong. You know, like, oh, it's like the cat likes you. But if you ever touch it if you ever dare to lay even a finger upon its pristine fur it will try its best to kill you another thing it'll do right is it gets in the it gets in a playful mood and i've learned this yeah what it does is it'll just lay on its back on the floor and kind of roll around a bit and look at you like hey look at me I'm ready to play. And then you can you can go up to it and you don't touch its belly, it'll bite you. But if you touch the top of its head or scratch underneath her chin, she likes that. That's the only way I can touch her, is scratching her chin when she's decided to lay down. But also, she loves chasing shit. So what I'll do is I'll start uh, going like this on the floor. And, and she'll watch it and her cat brain will be like, oh, a thing. And she'll try and catch it. And she'll put her paws on it, doesn't use claws, and she'll be like, got it. And then I'll pull it away, and then I'll go around like that. And then, you know, playing with a cat, like any fucking normal pet, right? But not my cat. So I'm doing that, and then I start moving it away before she can grab it. You know, make it a little bit harder for her. And then I start moving it away, moving it away. She can't catch my hand. I'm a lot faster than her. i got a much bigger brain. Cat's brain's about five centimeters. Mine, at least six, right? So I'm doing that and she can't catch my hand. And then she makes this frustrated meow noise and just attacks my face instead. She's like, you fucking dog, let me catch her. She got frustrated that she couldn't catch my hand while we were playing that she decided to try and kill me. And I can tell that she's not playing. She's not like trying to beat me up. She's trying to murder me. Fucking cat. But every time we change its food, it turns into a different personality. I feel like I want a cat in a hundred million years when they've just worked out how to calm the fuck down like dogs have. Like dogs evolved muscles in their face and in their eyes to express body language to humans. Cats don't have any of that shit. All they have is like happy tail, angry tail. And they look super similar. She changes so much when we change her food that 
I don't know what's wrong with it. This is this is the latest thing that happened. So we've been cycling through a few different foods. When we first got her, she wouldn't ever let her touch her her belly at all because she was constipated, right? The, the, her previous owner had her on shitty dry food. So we changed that completely different cat because she wasn't fucking confiscated or com- constipated all the time, right? Um, and, and then she was happy for a little bit. But then... Uh, that one gave a diarrhea, so we changed it again, and then she was uh, she was better. But the food that we were giving her came in chunks that was too big. The dumb fucking idiot can't chew shit. She looks at a chunk of chicken that is a little bit too big, and she will lick it, and then she will leave it in the bowl. She would actually prefer to starve to death rather than open her her mouth more a, a little bit. You know. Like, just open your mouth more. I feel like I'm yelling at my girlfriend. <laughs> so we finally got, we're like, all right, we got a even better food. Every time we change it, we go up in price, right? Because we want to feed the cat proper real shit. Because I feel like a lot of pet food is just McDonald's for them, right? Grains and shit. Like, pets sh- shouldn't be eating fucking grains. So we do that. Um, change it again and 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 this one changes her fucking brain right we put her on this new cat food and then she starts seeing her shadow and her reflection for the first time ever i don't know why the food made her change but it did i don't know if that made her smarter or dumber because ever since we changed her fucking food now she sits on the cat tree and stares at the wall at the two shadows she gets and just looks and moves and she will do that actually for three hours and for some reason, she thinks that the shadows are inside the air conditioner. So now, she'll just stare at her shadows, and every time she moves and they move, she will move and freak out, and then she'll put her hands on the wall and try to put her fucking paws inside the air conditioner. Because we changed her food. I want that cat in a hundred million years, because today, it's annoying and it sucks. She comes home and she's weak. Sorry, we come home and she's really excited for us to get home. And she starts meowing and meowing, not because we're home and she loves us, not even because we feed her and she's hungry, but because when we turn the light on, her shadows come back and she can run up the cat tree and watch shadow TV. Oh, and the food before that. It made her a little bit smarter or dumber, depending on your perspective. She discovered that the TV has moving shapes and we can't play Lego Harry Potter without her chasing all of the fucking bits that come out, which is kind of cute until she breaks the television. (laughs) Cats suck, bro. Why do we have them? They don't appreciate us. We should put them in... We should fucking ground them for 100 million years until they evolve to appreciate us. Because right now, it's no good. All right. And with that, shall we do Miscellaneous Bit at the End? I think we shall. Uh, if you like to, if you don't know, Miscellaneous Bit at the End is the... Uh, oh, before I get to that, i got to tell you something super petty that I did that I'm really proud of myself for. So, I'm in a group chat with a bunch of, like, YouTubers and shit, way bigger than me. Lots of banter being flown, thrown around. Uh, you know, you shit on this guy for this reason. You shit on that guy for that reason. You talk shit about this and that. You know, normal group chat stuff where everyone piles on one person. We give shit to them too much until they th- think of a zinger. And then everyone piles on that person who copped the zinger, right? Right now, I'm copping it. because uh, and, and the current, current group chat meme is that uh, I perform uh, in front of five people. A lie, it's not true, and that's where the funniness is. So they keep telling me that I am performing in front of five people in empty theatres because they went on my Instagram, found a photo of me taking a photo in a theatre before the show with empty seats, and they said, man, so sad to see that no one showed up to your show. That sucks, bro. Then, next thing I know, people start photoshopping the caption to make the post of me, to make the post about me yelling at you guys for not coming to the show, this and that. I start getting absolutely roasted and flamed. It's fucked, right? So the way I fought back is I've went and I found a canvas printing service and I have uh, uploaded a photo of me performing in Brisbane to 450 people sold out with my arms out like this and the audience lit up and I've printed off a canvas for everyone in this group chat to be sent to their fucking homes. (laughs) And it's going to arrive 
tomorrow. And I'm so excited for the day when the group chat all get their canvas on the same day because I coordinated the shipping times. They're all going to get the same canvas, the same size at the same day to their front door. And it's going to be me performing in front of a sold out crowd in Brisbane in a massive theater. And I'm going to say, hang that on the wall, you cunt. And uh, as you can see, the the petty banter has gotten out of control. So I don't know when the fuck I'm going to get what I'm going to get in the mail, but um, I guarantee you it's going to be very heinous. I'll keep you guys updated. So that yeah, so basically what I'm saying that's a good one, guys. If you want to get if you want to win the petty war, ordering a canvas to your friend's house with your counter argument is the absolute way to go about it. Uh, where are we? podcast at loosespears.com. If you'd like to send an email to podcast at loosespears.com, if you have any, if you need some life advice, if you have a funny story, um, anything like that, uh, please do send it to podcast at loosespears.com. Um, all right. Uh, someone sent in uh, an email. When is the uh, next Christopher Ruse mixtape coming out? And why is the second mixtape not on YouTube? Um, the Oh, sorry. When is another? The second one is already out. When is the third tape coming out? Uh, and why is... The second tape is not on YouTube because I haven't been bothered to upload it. Music has been such a low priority for me this year because I felt like I was really restarting my online output and business and stand up and I signed to a new touring company and we had Luke and Lewis and uh, I just hired Keelan and we're trying to work out this and that I'm doing merch myself still so I felt like this year was really I had to go 100% all in on comedy to properly make it work work out my income and uh, make sure that I was in a position where I would sell tickets and make sure my performance was up to the point up to the point where people would fucking love it which it is which is awesome um and also get myself to a position financially where I can order four canvases of me performing just to be petty in the group chat to my friends' houses. Um, so now that I'm at that point and I can afford canvases to win arguments, um, I have actually been writing a lot of music recently. And I think what I'm going to do... Oh, the reason why it's not on YouTube is I haven't been bothered. Uh, I'm, I, I keep meaning to do it. I will do it. Um, I just haven't been bothered to. But I will do it. Um, the, what I'm thinking of doing, this is tentative, don't quote me on this, what I'm thinking of doing with my music, I think that just looking at the Oz rap scene and even just the music scene in general, I don't think mixtapes are the way to go about it anymore. It's singles. Whereas you make a lot of noise about a single and you put out the single, people like it, then you put out the film clip, people like it, and then you put out an next single, people like that, you put out another film clip for that single, people like that. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Next year, I'm just I'm writing a lot of songs and I'm picking instrumentals and shit. I think what I want to do is release instead of releasing, you know, a 6-8 track mixtape and then going dark for like a whole year until I write the next one. I think I'm just going to put out one track a month for the year. If I have all of those recorded and ready, but I think that's possible just judging by what I'm writing and the beats that I'm choosing and all of that stuff. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's the plan. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Again, comedy is my priority. Music's just for fun. So we'll see. But it's also like really good stuff what I've been writing, I think. Um, okay. Okay. This one, we've got an email here. I need help with an arranged formal. Dude, that's hectic. What are you in, fucking Mumbai in high school? Hey, Lewis, please keep me anonymous. Um, alrighty, James. I need help because my parents arranged for me to go to formal next year with a friend of theirs, a daughter. Um, well, that's good. Uh, they have done this all without consulting me, and I do not find her attractive at all. Oh, no. I don't even like her that much. Oh, no. I'm not even good friends with her. It's just that our parents are such good friends. Oh, poor girl. Because I guarantee you, she's probably thinking the same shit about you. I don't know if you're a good-looking guy or not. Um... I've tried talking to my parents about me and telling that I telling them that I don't want to go, but they just tell me to do it or just go as friends. 
but I know she's had a big crush on me. Oh no, that's even worse. I was going to say, hopefully she feels the same way about you. Because if neither of you want to do it, that's great, right? But if one of you really wants to, oh, you're trapped, bro. I know she's had a big crush on me for years now and I don't want to lead her on and embarrass her or myself. So I need your advice to get myself out of this shit situation I've found myself in. Cheers, have a shit one. I had a similar experience, not the same. My parents didn't set it up, but I remember I was... I it's It's a nice move or a dog move depending on how you look at it. I'm actually undecided of how I feel about this. So there was, uh, where I went to school, there was like a near, in the same area, there was an all girls school and the girls, uh, all just linked up with all the boys in my school because how else are you going to meet people of the opposite gender? And also for us, way easier to get with a girl from an all girls school than it is to get with our classmates because they see us being dickheads. Whereas the all girls school girls see us as, oh, penis is awesome, right? So that was kind of the arrangement, yeah, where um, we knew a lot of girls from this all-girls school and they they had a formal um, and I think they were doing it with, they, they did it where you could bring whoever to the formal. So you could bring another girl or you could bring a boy from a different school. So uh, I, all of my friends had linked up with a girl um, to go to this formal and I asked a girl who I actually really liked at the time and I asked her and she said yes she liked me as well but then stupidly her friends started asking me about it and I was trying to play it cool and like oh so why did you ask this girl and when did this happen and blah 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 and I said yeah we've been talking you know and then I just kind of said it uh, as a joke uh, if she would go and she said yes now I did not say it as a joke. I was serious, but I wanted to seem cool to her friends. And then of course her friends go and tell her, "Oh, he was just asking you as a joke." And then she gets back to me and goes, oh, "I don't really want to go with someone who's just going as a jo- asking me as a joke. I want to go with someone who wants to go with me." And then she decided to go with someone else. And I was like, "Fuck! I really like this girl." But then there was another girl in the friendship group and she really liked me really liked me and she was a nice girl lovely girl but I didn't like her but also I really wanted to go to the formal because all my boys would be there and I still like this other girl so I thought ah let's see what happens right so I go with this other girl that I that I was a nice girl but did you know didn't like her in that way, okay? So I go with this girl. I didn't know her at all, but she was into me, whatever. And then we go to the formal and uh, it was actually a great time, right? Because I just enjoyed myself with the girl that I'd agreed to go with. I'm going to call her Sarah, right? Uh, oh, no, wait. I can't. I won't do that. Um, because, yeah. <laughs> because one of, the, one, of the, one of the girl's names in this scenario, not this girl, is called Sarah. So I can't call her Sarah because... That'll confuse it because the Sarah that I'm talking about is not this girl. I'm going to call this girl, fuck, what was her actual name? I'm going to call this girl Tony, right? With an I, not a Y. Hey, Tony, right? So I'm with this girl, Tony, and I don't like Tony. She's a nice girl, but I didn't like her like that. And she was into me. Uh, And I really wanted to get with this other girl who I'm going to call Michelle. (laughs) Uh, So I'm into Michelle, but I went with Tony, yeah? Um, So... Uh, had a lovely time with all my boys and then these girls who we got along with well, uh, we were kind of in the same friendship group. So we had an amazing time and formal bro. It's not really like you, when you're with someone, when you go with someone, you spend the whole night with them. It's not really like that. You're just hanging out with your friends and you just sit next to the person. So if you're not into that person, you can talk to the person that you are into and try and make some progress while you're there. (laughs) So uh, that's what was happening. And I remember the only awkward thing was I knew this girl wanted to kiss me because I heard from that. And I thought, I can do that because... I probably should because she had she came from like crazy rich background. I'd never seen money like it. I didn't come from money, but she her parents did. They lived in a fucking mansion. They paid for a limo. They did this and that. I got some nice shit. I got a gift. 
all that kind of shit. The formal was ridiculous. It was like a money private school shit. So I'm like, oh, I felt, you know, typical poor broke kid. I'm like, oh, she gave me stuff. So I should try and, you know, give back in how I can. I guess I'll be nice and I'll kiss her. And I remember, oh, it was not good. I remember we were dancing together and she was like, so she was doing that thing where she was like, all you need to do is complete the final step and lean forward and it's locked. You know, she put herself in the position for me to complete the move, right? And I remember dancing with her and I was psyching myself up in my own head going, all right, now's the moment, time to make a night, time to give her a kiss. And then I I, t- I turned around and <laughs> I walked away, I couldn't do it. And I, I hurt her feelings a little bit, uh, but it wasn't that bad, bro. Just go, just go with her. Um... It wasn't that bad. I would either just put... It, I don't know. you got two options. If you have a viable option to go with someone else, just go... Just put the foot down and be like, I'm not... I didn't agree with this. I, I don't want to go with this girl. I know you guys are friends, but I don't really get along with her. Put the foot down and take someone else. If you have no one else to go with, just go with the girl and hang out with her and be a nice guy. You're not picking up on formal, bro. It just doesn't happen. That's not what happens. All these girls, they're in their dresses, they've spent money on makeup and they've done their hair. They don't need to get fingered in a park. They're not doing that, right? Save that for the fucking after party. Um, Which you'll end up with with all of your fucking friends anyway. So just do that, bro. Um, And yeah, that's what I would do, man. Just, I don't know, put the foot down and say, no, I'm not doing it. Take the girl you want to take. But if you have no date, a date is better than no date. And just be honest with this girl and don't hurt her feelings. And, you know, don't that don't kiss her. I'm glad that I didn't. I felt like obligated to, but you don't have to. And that's probably a good good message for the girls out there. You don't have to kiss someone if you don't if you if you don't want to. You're not obligated to do anything for anyone, alright? Be a cunt. That's the end of the podcast. And I'll see you soon. Have a shit one.